In the last lecture, we talked about the discriminant of a polynomial. And at the end of the lecture, we saw how to understand Galois groups of quadratic polynomials. The main goal of this lecture is going to be to understand Galois groups of cubic and quartic polynomials, which, not surprisingly, are quite a bit more complicated. So one of the things that I want to do in this lecture is solve several practice problems from previous algebra qualifying exams. OK, so what's our setup? Let's suppose that f is a field with the characteristic of f not being 2 or 3. So why do we want the characteristic not to be 2? As we talked about last time, the discussion that we had of the discriminant and a n as a subgroup of s n is a little bit different in characteristic 2 in a way that I would like to ignore for now. So let's suppose the characteristic of f is not 2. Why are we supposing the characteristic of f is not 3? because our goal is going to be to understand Galois groups of cubic polynomials first. So our polynomial will be x cubed plus ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are in our field f. And we want to compute the Galois group of this polynomial. So the Galois group of the splitting field of this polynomial over f. What we're going to do is understand this question by uh, understanding it in terms of a related but simpler polynomial. So we're going to do this substitution where we let x equal y minus a over 3, where a is this coefficient here. Why are we going to do that? Because now f of x is equal to g of y, where g of y is y cubed plus py plus q, where p and q are given in terms of a, b, and c in this way. So what's going on is in order for this to make sense, 3 has to have an inverse in f. So we want the characteristic of f not to be 3. OK, so uh, of course, you can talk about Galois groups of cubic polynomials over a field of characteristic 3, but you have to do something else that's more complicated. And we'll leave that question uh, for now. OK, so what's the point? We're taking this general polynomial f and transforming it into this related polynomial g. g is simpler because now the y squared coefficient is 0, and that was not true necessarily of f. So what do I mean this related polynomial? What's the difference between the roots of f of x and the roots of g of y? They only differ by this constant a over 3. Right? If you have a root alpha uh, of f of x, you get a root um, of uh, g of y from it. So what does that mean? The roots of one polynomial are translates of the roots of the other by an element in f. So what that means is when you think about adjoining the roots to f, you get the same splitting field over f. So if f of x and g of y have the same splitting field over f, then the Galois group of, g of f and the Galois group of g are the same by definition. OK, also, since the roots of f of x and the roots of g of y only differ by this element a over 3, which is in f, that means that f of x and g of y have the same discriminant. Because what is the discriminant? It's this product of you take differences of the roots and you square them. So if the roots of one polynomial are a over 3 off from the roots of the other, each root is being translated by a over 3. So when you take the difference, that a over 3 cancels out. So you get the same discriminant. OK, what is that discriminant? Well, uh, you can compute the discriminant of this cubic polynomial, y cubed plus py plus q. This is given as a computation in dummet and foot. I want to skip the details. I encourage you to check it out to like read through it and think about it once. But you can show that the discriminant is given by this expression in terms of these coefficients. d equals minus 4p cubed minus 27q squared. And from this expression, we know that we can write down p and q in terms of a, b, and c. You get an expression for the discriminant of f in terms of a, b, and c. So this is worth remembering. This is really useful 
in uh, applications where you're asked to compute the Galois group of a particular cubic polynomial. Okay, so I said in the last lecture that part of what we want to do is give a recipe for I hand you a cubic polynomial, you tell me it's Galois group. So how does that work? First, if your polynomial f of x is reducible, then it factors in f bracket x is either a product of three linear factors, in which case all the roots of f of x are already in f, the splitting field of f of x over f is already just f, and the Galois group is trivial because you're taking a trivial extension. Or maybe it's reducible and it factors as a product of one linear factor and an irreducible quadratic factor. Then the root of that linear factor is already in f. And the splitting field of f of x over f is the splitting field over f of that quadratic polynomial. And OK, we're not in characteristic two. That irreducible quadratic polynomial uh, generates a degree two extension of f that is Galois. And the Galois group of this cubic polynomial is the Galois group of that irreducible quadratic factor, which is isomorphic to z mod 2z, which corresponds to the non-trivial permutation of the two roots of that quadratic polynomial. OK, so those are the only ways that you could have a reducible cubic factoring in f bracket x. So now we're just left in the case where f of x is irreducible in f bracket x. So what do we know? You would join one root of an irreducible polynomial. That cubic is the minimal polynomial of that root that you adjoin. So what you get is a degree three extension of your field. F adjoin alpha one, where this is just one of the three roots of this polynomial. Uh, this gives you a degree three extension. So whatever the splitting field is, it contains F adjoin alpha one as a subfield. So the degree of the splitting field of F of X over F is divisible by three because it has this subfield that is a cubic extension of F, a degree three extension of F. Okay, so what else do we know about the splitting field? We know the Galois group of F is isomorphic to a subgroup of S3. So the largest that the degree of the splitting field could be is six. So we have a subgroup of S3 that has uh, order divisible by three in S3. So what are the possibilities for what the Galois group could be? Well, there are not that many subgroups of S3. It could either be all of S3, or it could be A3. So A3, remember, is just isomorphic to Z mod 3Z, because the only even permutations in S3 are the three cycles. So I'll pause and erase, and I'll talk about how to tell whether the Galois group of your polynomial is S3 or A3. And what it comes down to is we know that the uh, splitting field contains this field that has degree three over F as a subfield. The question is, when is this field the whole splitting field? And when is it a proper subfield of the splitting field? We just saw that when f of x is an irreducible cubic in f bracket x, the Galois group of f is either isomorphic to S3 or to A3, because we know it's isomorphic to a subgroup of S3 that has order divisible by three. Okay, so there's a different way to see this that I wanted to mention. We know that not only is the Galois group of f isomorphic to a subgroup of S3, but we know that it's isomorphic to a transitive subgroup of S3. And what are the transitive subgroups of S3? There are only two, S3 itself and A3. So this is another way to see this same fact. All right, so if we want to understand Galois groups of cubic polynomials, now when our polynomial is irreducible, we only need to understand when do you get S3 and when do you get A3? So when is the Galois group of F isomorphic to A3? We're just going to use this result directly from last lecture. The answer is if and only if D is a square in F. How does this work? If D is not a square in F, then you know that square root of D is an element of the splitting field of F of X over F. So if you take F adjoin the square root of D, 
If D is not a square in F, this is a degree two extension of F. So now we have a degree three extension of F that comes from adjoining one root, let's say alpha one, and a degree two extension of F that comes from adjoining the square root of D. And the composite of these two extensions is degree six over F. This is something we proved about the uh, degree of the composite of two extensions when the degrees over F are relatively prime. And this composite is definitely contained in the splitting field of f of x over f, right? Because uh, the splitting field contains alpha 1 and it contains square root of d. So it contains f adjoin alpha 1 and f adjoin square root of d. So it contains the composite of these two extensions. But we know that the degree of the splitting field is at most 3 factorial, 6. So here, uh, it's at least 3 factorial. So the splitting field has to actually be the composite of these two extensions. OK, so what are we saying? The splitting field of f of x over f is the field generated over f by alpha 1. You just choose one root of this irreducible polynomial and adjoin it to f, and the square root of d, the square root of the discriminant of this polynomial. OK, so. I just want to note that this statement that the splitting field is generated over f by alpha 1 and the square root of d is also true if d is a square in f, because then square root of d is in f. And this just is the field generated over f by alpha 1. But that's the case where our Galois group is isomorphic to a3, degree 3 over f. So f adjoin alpha 1 is the splitting field of the polynomial in the case that d is a square. In F. OK, so uh, let's talk a little bit about the Galois group. In the case that um, D is not a square in F, then we get the splitting field is this degree 6 extension of F. And the Galois group is isomorphic to S3. What are generators for that Galois group? Well, we get every possible permutation of the roots. Uh, we know that we have this non-trivial Galois element uh, of the quadratic extension uh, f adjoined square root of d over f. So what are generators for this copy of S3? Well, or for this group isomorphic to S3, we have sigma, which sends our first root of f of x to any other root of f of x. Let's just name the roots alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3. We have this automorphism of the splitting field fixing f that sends alpha 1 to alpha 2 and sends square root of d to itself. This has order three. And then we have this automorphism that sends alpha one to alpha one and sends square root of D to the negative square root of D. So it switches the two roots of the uh, minimal polynomial of square root of D over F. And this automorphism has order two. And in S3, if you have any elements of order three and any elements of order two, together they generate all of S3. OK, so I'll pause and erase, and we'll work through one example of the Galois group of a cubic polynomial. I want to end this video with an example. This is algebra qualifying exam, fall 2010, number five. Let's say f of x is x cubed plus 4x plus 2, it's polynomial in Q bracket x. You're asked to find the Galois group of F as an abstract group. So just saying, what group is it isomorphic to? OK, well, first thing we want to do is check whether this cubic is irreducible or reducible. It is irreducible. It satisfies Eisenstein's criterion at p equals 2. So it's irreducible, so the Galois group is isomorphic to S3 or A3. Which one is it? Well, we just need to determine whether or not the discriminant of this polynomial is a square in Q or not. Well, we're in luck here. This cubic already is in the form where the x squared coefficient is 0. So we can use this much simpler uh, expression for the discriminant. This is of the form x cubed plus px plus q, where here p equals 4 and q equals 2. So what's the discriminant? It's minus 4p cubed minus 27q squared, which is uh, minus 4 times 64 minus 27 times 4. Wait, sorry, I messed that up. It's minus 4 times. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
times 16 times 4 times 64 minus 27 times 4. And you can check that this is minus 364, whatever it is. It's definitely not a square in Q. So adjoining the square root of the discriminant gives a degree two extension of Q. Adjoining one of the three roots of this polynomial gives a degree three extension of Q. The splitting field of this polynomial must be the composite of those two extensions. And the Galois group uh, is all of S3. It's a subgroup of S3 of order six. So it has to be all of S3. Okay, so uh, using what we've developed here, computing the Galois group of a cubic polynomial that's given to you as x cubed plus px plus q comes down just to computing the discriminant of the polynomial and checking whether or not it's a square. Okay, so most of the time, most cubics have Galois group isomorphic to S3. There is some precise sense in which that is true that I don't want to talk about here. Uh, you should have an example in mind where the Galois group actually is isomorphic to A3. So an irreducible cubic where the discriminant is a square in Q. So you should have an example of this in mind just to, to check that it really does happen. So here's one. If you take f of x to be x cubed minus 3x plus 1, you can check that this polynomial is irreducible over Q. I mean, one way to check that is if it were reducible, it would have to have a root in Q. And you can check that it doesn't. What is a discriminant? Well, it's minus 4 times p cubed minus 27 times Q squared, which is minus 4 times minus 3 cubed minus 27 times 1 squared. Minus 3 cubed is minus 27. So we get 4 times 27 minus 1 times 27, which is 3 times 27, which is 81, which is a square in Q. OK, so I would recommend that you keep this in mind. Uh, you might see a problem like this where the x squared coefficient is not 0. And what I would recommend is first translating from this polynomial f of x to the related polynomial g of y from the beginning of this video, and then computing the discriminant of g of y. But the thing that I want you to, to see is that computing the Galois group of any cubic polynomial is pretty straightforward.